Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point. Now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on May 19th, 2021. Uh, we are just stumbling through this Biden economy, but uh, here we go. Uh, we're still standing on our feet. Before we get into it, though, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I will be your host today. So let's jump right into Biden's <clears throat> bungling economy. We've had now uh, quite a few months to uh, for people to get a taste of of what they thought they wanted and what they wanted to get away from uh, with Trump and, <laughs> and and maybe just sanity in general. I don't know, <laughs> but but uh, uh, but uh, so so one of the first things we had and this this wasn't completely in Biden's uh, control what happened, but it how they handled it is kind of a interesting uh, indicator, and that's the the colonial pipeline problem that we recently had. So um, we had a situation on the uh, mostly on the East Coast and uh, uh, coming from Texas, and I guess a pipeline that fed a lot of the East Coast on gasoline. They had a, a problem where I guess Russian hackers had gotten in and um, uh, essentially put in a, a ransom program so that the uh, uh, company had to pay a ransom or else they weren't going to be able to ship uh, I, I'm not sure if they were shipping, uh, uh, they were probably shipping oil through the pipeline or if it was gasoline. They were shipping gasoline and, and gasoline. other fuels, jet fuels and other things like that. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, so they were actually shipping the fuels uh, yes. in this pipeline. <laughs> and uh, and so they, they were they were stuck. And uh, and so the, uh, uh, the Biden administration, uh, the odd thing was they didn't seem that concerned about it <laughs> when it first happened. I mean, they were they were kind of, uh, uh, you know, saying that uh, this is this is something that uh, the company needs to handle, and you know, it, which is really odd because when when Trump was in there a while back, it was Russia, 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 and oh my God, what's going on? This guy's a Russian plant. Yes. When Biden's in there, and I mean, this has got to be a very serious attack on our nation's infrastructure. I mean, we literally had gasoline lines that were forming that looked like the 70s in a lot of these places people trying to put gasoline unsafely in all kinds of uh, non-recommended containers and by the way that is a very dangerous thing putting a gasoline will leak out it will uh, vapors will come out and it will be flammable and so we yes. saw some images of cars that went on fire you know because people tried to store gasoline and so it cre essentially created a big shortage and some economic chaos on our east, southern, southeast coast, and um, you know, Biden was kind of like, "Well, this is the company's problem to figure out," and you know, no crisis, no, no big, uh, no, no big shakes for him on this. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on this? You know, it was amazing to me. It was amazing to me how how nonchalant the administration was about this matter. They want to intervene in so many parts of our economy now. You know, they're telling us what is essential and what is not. But here we have a major pipeline in the United States goes down. People are forming lines outside to get gasoline. And you just raise the issue about these non-standard containers that they were using. Gasoline fire, fires were ignited as a result in some cases. But yet the administration said, oh, they, they, they're not going to intervene. They can't do anything. They want to intervene any, every place else, you know. Well, we cannot do anything. This is a private company. This is a private matter. Okay. The company had to pay had to pay ransom to to get to get back operations of, of, of their own pipeline. And the Biden administration turned around and tell us, well, we are sure it was not the Russian government to do that. There are people who are living in Russia, the people who are living in Russia, but we are sure it was not the Russian government involved. Now think about the madness of this. Russia is led by Vladimir Putin, a totalitarian at, by, by, by every sound of the word. And you want to try to tell me he was not aware of this? They are not aware of what they were doing. The GBR, which is one of their, their, um, their counterintelligence agencies, was not aware of what these people were doing. And, they had, and what is the administration doing about this? Nothing. All of a sudden, Russia was this big problem. Oh, we have a Russian asset in the White House. That was the statement about <laughs> Trump. Now we have actual evidence 
of Russia taking action against us as a country. And oh, we are sure the Russian government is not involved. There are people living in Russia, but the Russian government is not involved. The hypocrisy is nauseating. Well, it's, it, it, it almost, really is. It almost might make you wonder, is, is Biden a Russian asset? I mean, the, the Democrats <laughs> yes. are so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, know, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm I, surprised Hillary hasn't wondered that. <laughs> okay, okay. YouTube uh, fact-checking us out there, these at YouTube... Um, who <clears throat> love to delete everything we, you know, they, they, they chomp at the bit to delete our videos, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> which is, is qu quite the compliment, I have to say. But um, just, I was going to mention that, but prior to doing that, Jason just blurts it out. Oh, as if sorry, had, Tim, I'm Just blurts it out. And no, your yeah, I, I, was, I was going to say, uh, YouTube, you know, fact check or delete us, I... I'm just kidding here, but I, I was going to say, now we know who the real Russian plant is. Yes. But Jason beat me to it, but, okay, so. Well, I'm just glad, I'm, I'm glad we're taking the heat off of Tulsi because, you know, we, we all knew that Tulsi was the Russian asset. Oh, that's you see what I mean? Oh, that's a we're, we are saving you, Tim. We are saving you. We are yeah, saving we, you. We can't you. have Tulsi being accused like this. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah anywho um yeah just i was going to be kidding um i don't know if jason's kidding but i think he is so you know <laughs> give us a break here cut us cut us some slack you know we have no bona fide evidence that yeah. biden is a russian plant we don't know that Okay, we just don't know no, that. No, and, and remember, I never said We're he was. Saying. I just said it makes you wonder. It makes, it makes <laughs> you wonder. Especially yes, if you're like Hillary, because you wonder if everybody's a Russian asset yes. if it's not herself, right? right? Oh, of course. Of course. of course, of <laughs> course. Especially, you know, people, it's, you know, I, I'm starting to think that, you know, because of Tulsi, uh, that maybe uh, to be a Russian axe, uh, asset, you actually have to have a brain. You have to have intelligence. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> there's a, you know, I mean, who would say that Biden was a Russian asset? I mean, crying out loud, if I was looking for an asset, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be Biden. Somebody, somebody as dumb as Joe Biden yeah. at all. It could be a broken what, asset, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 um, uh, I guess, uh, you know, the comment about uh, electric cars, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, well, like, well, yeah, like electric grids don't have any issues themselves with going down and, and all the stuff related to that. Um, anyway, I, I don't know. What, what can we say? Well, or is that knucklehead knuckle yes. noise? Yeah. Knucklehead noise. That's knucklehead noise patrol. So don't, oh, don't okay. confuse yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, don't, <laughs> don't give it away. Don't give it away. To yeah. Yeah. I need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All those uh, but, but assets running through our heads are just uh, heads, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> too many, too many, <laughs> too many of them. But it it does make you wonder though, how far is our government gonna go just to promote their agenda. To, to, to me, it looked like they didn't care that the colonial pipeline went down. They didn't care about it because it was fossil fuels being um, being transported along the lines. I suppose if it was a, a energy farm uh, generating solar energy and, and wind energy, they might have cared a little more. But it just makes you wonder, is it fossil fuels just because of it, it was yeah. that they didn't care that that the about the ramifications of this line going down for an entire week, and now we are feeling the after effects two weeks later. They didn't care about it at all. Yeah, but yeah. but have have some uh, uh, vandal uh, take dynamite and blow down a, a wind turbine, and uh, oh my God, that would make the headlines for a week. Exactly. You know, this attack exactly. on our infrastructure is so important. You know, point zero 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 one percent of our energy consumption was just damaged. But 
<laughs> well, you know, th- th- this is an interesting uh, uh, point, I think, for libertarians, though, because, um, you know, it, it, there was a, at least a grain of truth to what Biden said when he uh, said this is a private company. And um, it, w- with respect to, to uh, you know, when should government be jumping in to these issues of private companies to in order to defend them versus, <clears throat> um you know, uh, uh, versus just letting the company take care of their own problems. And well, it, when, this, when, uh, I'll answer case, that. It's yes, I can answer company, that too, but go ahead. Go I'll ahead. answer it. It's when the company puts money into their re-election campaign. I had I had a most, uh, a most serious answer to that, Jason. But, but Tim, I'll take yours. It was good. No, it was no. brilliant. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the yes. first thing they check. That's the first thing they check. Okay, that's our second <laughs> criteria. Go ahead, Leon. What Did you have more but, to it? it was, yeah. yeah. As libertarians, Jason, you raised an interesting point. You're right. As libertarians, we should be very careful and always be leery of government intervention into the private economies, okay? Colonial Pipeline is a private organization. Yes, we should be leery of government intervention when they get into difficulties. But this is different. And you know why it's different? Because this was a foreign power attacking our infrastructure, okay? This was almost an act of war. I wouldn't call it an act of war, but it was almost an act of war. Because you cannot tell me the Russian government was not aware of this, if not actually supported it yeah what, what, so this is a case this is a case where government needed to intervene because this was national security at risk this was a case of it but i would agree with you in general we should always be leery of government intervening into the affairs of private organizations as libertarians that is something we should hold sacrosanct i agree with that go ahead well, and, I'm sorry. and that, that was the point i was i guess i was going to try and make is that what we saw with the colonial pipeline is an awful lot what an, a war on us might look like, you know, in the early yes. stages. A, a yes. war is very likely to be cyber attacks on parts of the infrastructure. Yes. And that could be private companies, you know, taking down satellites, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, you know, trying to um, interfere with the banking system more than our Federal Reserve does. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know what we'll do. We'll print a whole bunch of money. That's print what we'll do. Yes, yes. No, but, exactly. but even think about it, but, it but, but this is not a joke. When they're in war, one of the first com- things you go after is command and control. Mm-hmm. What do you go after? It's communications. Now think, for instance, here, let's just imagine a scenario here. God forbid. Let's imagine a scenario here. What if they went after all the cell phone towers, the communication cell phone towers in the United States? Mm-hmm. What's going to happen? Think about yeah. it. Yeah. That, that um, would be a serious attack on, on, on national security, on infrastructure, <laughs> on, on things, on, on our livelihood. Yeah, I agree 100% with uh, Leon that uh, the, um, the government should be um, very cooperative with uh, this colonial pipeline company and, uh, you know, offer help to uh yes to help them figure out what happened with this hack so not just colonial but every other uh company that runs fuel from refineries out to their um their receivers uh to to alter their you know their security and yes. and yeah it should be all throughout the nation and you know leo's apps absolutely <clears throat> right uh but I'm I'm thinking that the CIA and the FBI they're so uh, busy being woke up about you know <laughs> training their uh, agents to um, to hate themselves for being white and to <laughs> hate, be, hate and being, white and being American too and being yes. American yeah and being American critical critical race theory just, yeah, just critical race theory there. is is so much more important than yes. uh, cyber attacks I mean Leon. Get with the program, okay? I'm sorry, Tim. You my of apologies. all people. My should apologies. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you know, the, the, the crazy thing about this whole thing, too, though, is that aside from the, all of the national security implications and, you know, issues with private business and all this, what is the Biden administration's actions uh, once this occurs? Uh, their, their actions are actually kind of the standard big government throw 
throw more gasoline on the fire, so to speak. And when there are shortages being created, <clears throat> this is the big government playbook. And in fairness, it's not always just Democrats. Some Republicans make this ignorant mm -hmm. statement too. But they sure. say they immediately say no price gouging. No price <clears> gouging. gouging. Well, well, what is yeah. price oh. gouging? Price gouging is essentially yeah. saying there shouldn't be a price ceiling. And of course, the energy secretary came out and she was saying we got to make sure there's no price gouging in these situations where there's lines of people lining up for gasoline. Yeah. Well, what does a high price do? High price literally is a signal to everybody else who has gasoline that's available to bring it to that area. So there's the market. There is a market. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I think is rather odd because here in California, the government itself with its taxes on the gas uh, at the fuel pump. Uh, one thing different between Idaho and California is that it's about a, a buck 80 a gallon less in Idaho gas fuel. Hmm. And, um, oh, they also have an ethanol-free fuel that's available. No ethanol in it. Imagine that. It's yeah. a little more expensive. But I guess if you don't put the, you know, corn industry subsidy into your gasoline, you got to make it more expensive. I'm not sure how that works, but anyway, it does. And But anyway, the... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, the the governments themselves can price gouge with reckless abandon. Yeah, but uh, oh my God, don't let the the little uh, mom and sh pop uh, gas station increase the price of fuel thirty cents a gallon, so that it, they can actually bring it to the market and they won't get overwhelmed by people just you know sucking them dry. You know, and, and, you know, make a couple of bucks on it. And maybe you'll be able to afford to pay for the truckers now that are that are bringing it over instead of the pipeline. Uh, Joe Biden, you complete moron when it comes to. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think I did. Yeah. Oh, fuck checkers. Okay. Fuck checkers, uh, check Tim. Yeah, you too, you too. No, uh, they, they'll goes. check and they'll see he's a moron. Let's <laughs> see, moron. see is, is Joe Biden a moron? Uh, yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah. let, I, let, me, let me give you a, a brief true story here. Some About this same price gouging thing. In 1983, we have the major hurricane in Houston. I was living in Houston at the time. And... Of course, the power went out and everybody was looking for, for ice, okay? So immediately, the first thing happens, the politician come out, and there's probably was some Republicans in there too, come out and beat in their chest, no price gouging. We will arrest anybody for price gouging or some whatever, whatever dramatic statement they made, okay? So of course, we couldn't find ice. I, I think I got two bags or something like that. You know, at regular prices, maybe a couple bucks a bag or something like that. But that was all I was able to find. The politicians were beating their chest. Oh, they save us from power gouging and that kind of stuff. Well, the, fa the power eventually came back on. We finally got refrigeration back and that kind of stuff and things like that. But, you know, I probably, if, if the market was allowed to operate, I probably would have to spend about $30 to get enough ice to keep my products in my refrigerator refrigerated and all that, frozen and all that. I end up losing about $250 worth of food because I was not able to get ice. Because the politicians were all there beating their chest because there was no price gouging. But they saved you from paying too much for ice. That's they saved me, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and the disgusting thing about that, the disgusting thing about that, anybody who was in Houston in 1983 probably have a similar story. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. During, that, during that hurricane. It was a real bad hurricane. I, I don't remember. I think it was Alicia one. And, and it was a bad hurricane that went to Houston in 1983. My oldest son was just a baby at the time. Yeah. But they saved me. They saved me from the price gouging. But they cost me maybe $250 worth of food yeah. that I had to throw out. And me and my neighbors and, and, and a whole hell of a lot of people in Houston at the time. And this is what these politicians go about doing. They beat their chest to save us. We're from the government. Oh, yeah, We're here to help. Yeah. <laughs> so every um, every ice cream truck, every uh, truck with a refrigeration system that runs off the the engine itself um, had no incentive whatsoever to go drive out of Houston, go to some place <laughs> where they could buy ice at right. a, you know at the normal price, 
uh, and then they they could have bought a whole bunch of ice, put it into their refrigerated truck, turned around, and um, brought it back to Houston and and <clears throat> just put it out there and sold it for twenty bucks, thirty bucks a bag, whatever, whatever, yes. whatever the price, whatever the market would bear. No, exactly, no, 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 couldn't do that. No, no, because the government's here to help <laughs> you. Yes, <laughs> yeah. indeed. It, it, it and knows so better. That's, yeah. That's what happens. There's no incentive. It, you, you know, why would why it, would a normal person go and buy a bag of ice for two dollars or five bucks, let's say, and put it in their truck uh, and, you know, go up to Dallas or what? I don't know the area, but yeah, yeah, and yeah, bring yeah, it yeah. back to Houston and sell it for five bucks a bag. The same that they why they, they spent gas. <laughs> they spent their time. They right. spent their effort. Exactly. They, Exactly. They risked the you know danger on the road to bring it to market, and now the because the market is different now. Okay, it's changed. Something's happened. A, a little disruption has occurred, and if you cannot price gouge, you will not have whatever it is you want to buy at the at the price, whatever exactly. price it might be. Exactly, you will not have it. So yes. supply goes to the toilet unless and until. They can have price gouging with reckless abandon instead of government with reckless abandon. Because that is government absolutely out of control, telling people they can't sell stuff for a certain price. That, number one, I would like, yeah, take me to jail on that charge, you know, because they can't about just bring out some <laughs> brand new, you know, it's just like all this mask wearing and all this other social distancing and all that stuff. I mean, you know, yeah. Oh, is it a good idea? Yeah, probably people will do it. But to punish people is, you know, on laws that were never enacted is uh, just not right. Anyway. right. And, you know, and talk about the destruction of our liberty. At mm -hmm. least if the ice was available, say maybe it, was, it would have been available at $10 a bag. Mm -hmm. At least let me have the choice to decide if I'm going to let my food spoil oh, yeah. or if I want to pay the $10 a bag. At least yeah, give me the choice. Exactly, because uh, Joe Blow down the street uh, may not have had as much food. And he would have gone, well, the food's 50 bucks, so why, you know, let's just let it spoil. Hey, let's, let's eat it. Let's cook it right now, right. you know, or whatever. Uh, but no, no, they, they, they couldn't allow individuals to have a choice. They had to make their collectivist choice. Yeah. So if we're going to talk libertarianism, it is, in a nutshell, individualism over collectivism. That's yeah. what that's that's what libertarianism is, the individual over the collective few at the top making decisions <laughs> for everyone else. Well, well, well said, Tim. Uh, you know, in, in, I, I was going to try and you, get on. You got my round of applause. You got my round of applause. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I like it. Well, I, I was going to try and get into a few other economic things to the Biden, but I guess we'll have to save those for another one. But there is one other point to make, too, on this whole uh, price gouging thing. And, you know, a lot of times the government is doing this because they assume it's only the producers or the sellers who are are going to act in a way that they don't want to see them act. But it's actually the consumer in this case that there are that is really um, potentially causing the issues, right? I mean, because they, they, they are literally trying to buy things up, rationally expecting there to be a shortage. And that's not leaving the things for other people. And so when sure. that happens, uh, uh, you know, I mean, because we're literally seeing people putting gasoline in plastic bags, you know, I mean, which is crazy, you know, right? Uh, but, <laughs> yes. but you know, that that's what they're trying to get away from. So their idea is, well, the, 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 we can't let the evil person selling the gasoline, you know, make any kind of a profit here. We have to make sure that, you know, that uh, that gasoline is available. So what happens? Then the people who maybe don't have the highest reason, they're just trying to make sure they're not short in the future, they are consuming it all at the lower price, which is actually causing yeah. there to be a shortage for the guy in line behind him. And so then, right. anyway. Yeah, which, yeah that, that's the, the second edge, uh, the, uh, the two-edged sword, that's the second edge, is that uh, you have immediate, if you don't allow price gouging, you will have immediate loss of, of uh, 
the 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 product, whatever it might yeah, be. Of course, yeah, the remaining supplies will, will will disappear at the yeah. lower price. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then that person is going to think a little bit more before filling up that bag with yeah. gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to it, store in their car or whatever. Right. <laughs> it's it's simple demand economics. That's all it is. It is yeah. indeed, indeed. Yeah. Well, it's it's about that time in our show for our Knucklehead Boys Patrol. And this actually brings us right back to the uh, uh, pipeline story that we never got away from. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to, to tie it nicely to the end of the show, but uh, we're still there. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> one, of, one of the funny things about this whole <clears throat> um, pipeline was uh, the, the way the mask sort of came off for the Biden administration on on what they really think about, you know, some of their policies. And you guys were sort of alluding to that. Uh, and the idea that the, uh, what they, when this first came out, the, uh, uh, that there was this shortage uh, and that we had these Russian hackers, the uh, secretary of um, energy, uh, Granholm, came, uh, was uh, speaking from the White House. And what she said about it is, we're, we obviously are all in on making sure that we meet the president's goals of getting to 100% clean in electricity by 2035 and net zero carbon emissions by 2050. As you know, if you drive an electric car, this would not be affecting you, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, now there's a shortage here. Literally, people are not able to get to work or do whatever it is that's really important in their lives. And and it's a, literally, like I said, an attack on our country's infrastructure, potentially. And and they're telling you that, hey, if you chose to drove electric, then, you know, uh, you'd, you'd be doing a little better here. I, <laughs> You guys have any thoughts on that? You know, you know, I think, I think, in, for the people working in the Biden administration, there's a special school of idiocy that they go to before they could take up their position. I don't know if you remember, but when they asked John Kerry about shutting down the Keystone Pipeline, he said the workers, the workers who lost their job, they could go build solar panels, okay? He don't know where those jobs are. He don't know nothing else but stuff, but they could go win solar panels. Now we have people out on the streets suffering because they can't get gasoline or they can't get the fuels that they need for their cars or their homes or whatever they need it for. They can't get that. But here is the, our esteemed energy secretary telling them, oh, don't worry. We have these goals in 2035. When we're going to meet these goals and everything going to be so nice and wonderful. What about the people suffering right now? Oh, don't worry. The goals are out there. They're coming. Don't worry. See, I'm, I am telling you, these people go to a special school of, for idiots, obviously. <laughs> but at least we know they're not Russian plants because no, they're that's stupid. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's right. <laughs> as, as, as they're filling their uh, bag with gasoline at the uh, well, top, well, that, they can be assured they're saving the planet. <laughs> this goes on, you know, that, that this pipeline being down, it's all part of the big picture. <laughs> and and it, in one of those articles, uh, I like the the uh, now. Uh, uh, what is the word I'm thinking of? Starts with an A. But anyway, um, well, we better Marie, get to it quick because we're just about out of Marie time. Antoinette, you can uh, eat cake. There you go. Oh, eat cake. <laughs> you can all eat cake, and that's uh, that's the word from the Biden administration. <laughs> so we will see you at the next one, and until then, stay free. <laughs> <laughs>